Thank you everybody for joining my presentation this afternoon on basic switch technology. I hope that you'll enjoy it. Today we'll, we'll be going over several topics, uh, commercially modified battery powered toys, self-modified battery powered toys and devices, remote devices, remote communication between devices. I wanted to let you know that you are able to type in questions, and I'll get to those as I can. Also wanted to let you know that at the very end, there will be time for questions also. The purpose of switch technology. We want to be able to include children with special needs in classroom activities, want to improve motor function, help to learn cause and effect, and technology can be adapted for any grade, and it's fun. Another reminder is that this is a um, beginner presentation. And I do hope, though, that if we have some people on the line that aren't beginners, that perhaps I can give you a few other ideas to think about. I enjoy um, switches very much, and I'm really looking forward to going through this with you. Okay, with um, adapted toys. The first one we're going to be looking at is something that AbleNet produces, and that is um, a bunny rabbit with a jelly bean switch. In this, um, in this idea, we have the um, jelly bean switch already hooked to the permanently adapted toy. Okay, next, um, let's go ahead and look at the jelly bean switches. Um, when I first started, the jelly bean switches were available in one color, and now they have the twist off caps, which is very handy. Okay, in the next one, we have a self modified battery operated toy. It's a lot of fun to try and see whether you can get toys out there in the community that you can adapt yourself. In this one, you see a little dinosaur. And I went ahead and uh, took one of the AbleNet adapters and was able to hook him into the um, dinosaur. And the jelly bean switch, you see, is ready to be put into. I'd also like to mention that um, I'll be mentioning companies like AbleNet and Walmart and these different things. And it's not, I don't work for any of them. So um, I just enjoy the different products that they have. Okay, in the next slide, you'll see how we go about adapting a battery operated toy. And you can actually adapt any battery operated toy that there is, um, as long as you have a couple simple tools. As you can see here, there's um, a little copper plate with a plug attached and a notching tool. The battery device adapters um, come in two sizes. And again, you can get those from AbleNet. You can also um, make these yourself. Uh, many people go to a place like Radio Shack and buy the cord, um, buy the plugs. And you can go to some place like Michael's and get little pieces of uh, copper and um, attach them. For me, I just find it easier and handier to go ahead and buy these little devices ready-made. In this one, you see a daisy duck. This was a lot of fun. I enjoy going to uh, the Hallmark stores and love to see what they have there. Well, uh, last Christmas, they had one of these daisy ducks. And I really enjoyed it because uh, when you press this little bitty button here, she plays music and she moves. And so I adapted her so that I'd be able to use it with a jelly bean switch. In this one, you'll see how I went ahead and adapted the Daisy Duck. 
hopefully you can see the little bit of copper that's placed between the battery and the little connection here. Slide that right in. And then you also need um, a notching tool. Oh, I see that um, Marilyn has asked, how is the notching tool used? Okay, if you can see on the bottom of um, Daisy Duck here, in order to get this back piece to fit nicely over the batteries again, you need to take your little notching tool and just make a little groove in the end here. And that will let this wire easily go through there and then um, able to attach your um, back to it again. Okay, and this picture just shows the uh, just shows the um, Daisy Duck with everything attached here and the notching tool, and then uh, just an extra adapter to show you how it all fits together. Okay, and this one. Okay, on um, okay, um, oh, Michelle has asked, does it go on the positive or the negative end? And it really doesn't matter because what you're doing is just interrupting the flow of the current. So either end. Okay, in the next slide, you see a little cassette player and uh, these players are still very available at different garage sales or thrift stores. So it's the old-fashioned cassette player. And these have come in so handy, especially with students that I've worked with in, in school-based practice. Uh, you see the jelly bean switch here, and it's connected to the cassette player. One nice thing about the cassette players is that not only do they have still little music cassettes available, but also you might remember the little talking books. And so cassettes can still be found just about anywhere for hardly any money. In this particular um, device, I, want, I do need to mention though that you don't need a notching tool for this. You just need, for instance, your jelly bean switch and then your cassette player. Okay, in this one, I'll have you take a look a little bit closer. Um, often the jelly bean switch ends here, you can see, are a little bit too large to go into the small remote hole. Often the cassette players that you'll find will have two holes. One is the microphone hole, which um, if you want to use a little microphone, that goes into. But then what we're looking for is the little remote hole. And so the jelly bean switch, for instance, um, would need to have, in this case, a little adapter. And you can buy these adapters at all kinds of places. Um, oh, for instance, you have um, ones that can go into very, very tiny holes. So this end is then plugged into this little adapter plug that then goes into the remote hole. So to activate then, so you had a, a little person that wanted to get the music going. They would just need to press on the jelly bean switch and music would go on, or say your little talking book. And then when you lift off of the jelly bean switch, of course, then it would stop. OK, now we're going to go into um, remote controlled switches for battery operated toys. Oh, I might mention from Mary, um, she says, Think, I wish I would have known about the adapters. How awesome. Do they have a specific name? Can we get them anywhere? Well, I've always gone to Radio Shack to get the little adapters. Um, they don't really cost anything. Um, well, I should say hardly anything. And um, they really don't have a name other than adapter. And what I've, what I've done is um, taken my little jelly bean switch, 
and my tape player into, say, Radio Shack and say, I need something that will fit into this hole. And they've always been real helpful. So uh, that's uh, what I could tell you there. Okay, so with our um, remote controlled switches for battery uh, powered toys, here we have one of the um, AbleNet uh, transmitters, uh, Beamer transmitters, and then one of their adapted toys already attached, and then a receiver. And I've just become pretty excited about remote controlled devices. Oh, here is a, um, a note from Carla who said it's a, a 330 second adapter for the 1 8th plug. Thank you very much, Mary. Okay, and Carla. All right, so we'll go on. Okay, um, again, thinking about what is out there in the community, and it's just really uh, very fun to look at and see what's out there in the community. Um, this year, Hallmark had this really cool tree illuminator, and it's a remote switch and receiver for wall-powered devices. So let me go ahead and tell you how cool this little thing is. OK. And again, even though we're past um, the half price off sales that I like to go to, um, there still may be some of these particular things at um, your Hallmark store. Or of course, you know, you can always go on to eBay and find these things. Um, but at the, with the tree illuminator, you press down on the switch, and you can see that the receiver is over here. Now, everything is close together because of the picture, but the tree illuminator can be as much as 50 feet away from what you're trying to remotely hook up. Or in the case, I forgot to mention, in the case of the um, AbleNet toys with their uh, transmitter receivers, they can be approximately 30 feet away. So OK, so here we've got our tree illuminator, our receiver, and I put in here a, um, a string of lights. The idea, of course, was uh, for children to be able to turn on their own Christmas tree. OK, and another reason that I like this switch is you can see that you can have just about any type of grasp on it. You can use the flat of your hand, or you could use um, a more fine motor type of prehension. And all you have to do is press down on the switch, and lights will turn on. Um, a little bit of music will come on. And so this is sending the signal over to the receiver that you can see is plugged in. Um, this one isn't plugged into a wall, but it's into a power strip. So now we've got the lights going on. Hopefully, you can see that at the end of your screen. So we have all of these really neat things happening here. Well, I always have a fun time when I find one idea to try and expand it to other ideas. So after that turned out so fun, I went into the garage and rediscovered my electrical pumpkin um, that I bought a few years ago. And you can see these little electric pumpkins from um, Walmart are already have you know the cord attached. Okay, so here again we've got our in this our tree illuminator or pumpkin. Pumpkin is attached to the um, receiver which is attached to, say, the wall socket or to, um, let's see, um, the powered strip. Oh, uh, Kathy has said, have you tried to plug this into any other items? Um, yes, I have. And here's the, <laughs> the pumpkin to uh, show you how much fun this one was. And again, I'm sorry that in, this picture, in other, the pictures, the uh, receiver and the transmitter are close together. But again, this could be as much as 50 feet away. And again, thinking that you might have um, a little preschool group and you'd like the child with special needs to be the star of the show. And so they would be able to plug, they would be able to push this down and 
light it up for the whole classroom. And thinking about um, what other kinds of devices you can use, well, you know that they seem to make little lights for just about every season. So um, there's shamrock lights, there's little pumpkin lights. So just about anything you can think of um, that would plug into the little receiver then should be able to turn, be turned on remotely. Um, little heart lights, Valentine's Day, just, just about anything you can think of. Okay, again, going back to exploring and finding out what other cool things are out there in the community, um, Hallmark had these um, little um, devices about two years ago. And you can see my little daisy duck. Okay, so I have my little jelly bean switch, as we talked about, hooked into the daisy duck. Press that down, and she's going to play music and move back and forth. Well, because all of these other uh, Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and uh, Donald Duck, they all talk to each other remotely. So just pressing one will make all the others activate. And Hallmark has uh, seemed to have really gotten into this idea of remote control things. And so I'm not sure what they're going to come up with this year, but it certainly has been fun exploring what's out there. Okay. I've come up with a, uh, just a simple documentation form that I think uh, would be helpful. Anytime you're asking teachers or aides, for instance, to carry things over for you, you want to have a little form that they can easily document on. So if you look on this form here, and again, you can make yours more complicated. You could make your boxes much bigger. But for instance here, you could have something um, student is able to activate Daisy Duck. And then as you go across your dates, you could have, um, let's see, you could have your, um, um, it could be independent, maybe three out of five times, or maybe it's verbal prompt, um, one out of three. It really just can be um, anything you'd like it to be. Oh, David has said, is this documentation form available? Um, I would be glad to um, send you a copy or, oh, all right, or also in the handouts. Thank you, Gloria. Okay, and, and then one other thing that I really like about simple documentation forms is that when you go to an IEP meeting, for instance, you can easily show progress um, on something like this to the committee members. So I find things like this very helpful. Okay, at this point, I'm going to just see if there's any questions right now. Okay, um, let's go ahead and just look at the back of this for one more slide here. And again, I would invite any questions that you may have, and I'll be glad to go ahead and try and answer those for you. Uh, okay, I see here um, a question. Oh, is, okay, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry to skip a second here. Oh, Catherine said, you, you said you get the adapters from Amazon. Well, actually, um, I've always gone to uh, Radio Shack. Um, and something like Best Buy. Um, but like anything, you could always uh, get things online. Okay, uh, looks like someone else has a, a message here. Is, are people able to hear me now? Uh, yes, um, you're right. The, the Radio Shacks. Um, are closing in different places, um, but I guess I just bring up Radio Shack as a possibility. Um, Best Buy and, and places like that um, are able to still 
uh, get those links for us. And of course, anything online. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, I thought I saw another question. I think it was from um, I think it was from Janet, and she wanted to know could I? I think Janet had asked again about the connection um, to devices. Um, okay, going. Let me just go back. Let me just go back here a minute. And uh, she was just asking about the, the um, where that fits in. Let me just see if I can go back again. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, I'm going here. I went back here to the connection. Um, Okay, and that is um, the little plug that goes into this, uh, into this. And then, oh, I see she wanted to know. Let me go back one more. Okay. Okay, so you're going to have your notching tool. Okay, I think that's what she was asking about. Your little piece of copper goes in between your end of the battery and the connection. And as we mentioned before, it doesn't matter where if it's on the positive end or the negative end. I think while we have um, a little bit more time, I'll go ahead and just uh, mention something here at the again at the end. Oh, there was a uh, something I did I uh, forget to mention to you, and that was when we were talking about um, remote devices. Um, and we talked about Hallmark having um, the battery, uh, having the Daisy Duck, being able to um, talk, being able to communicate with each other. And that, um, so Hallmark was able to um, get the frequency to uh, communicate between all of those particular devices. But say if you would go to a garage sale, which I often go to, and you're thinking, oh, this is really cool. I found a battery-operated car, but it doesn't have the transmitter with it. Um, should I go ahead and pick that up? Well, you, you may or may not, but because things are a different frequency between devices, not necessarily would that remote control um, transmitter work with another device. And so that's one thing that you want to be careful of because um, I made that mistake in the beginning and uh, was so excited about finding some remote control fire cars at a garage sale, but then the uh, transmitter from one thing didn't work with the receiver for another. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind. Okay, um, since we just have a few minutes left, I'm going to ask, um, again, does anybody have any other questions? Okay, let's see. Um, does anyone have ideas for adapting a toy that has movement or somersaulting <laughs> to keep the cord Untwisted. Oh, that's a good one. I I don't know about that one. Um, I haven't tried to do that yet. Um, does anybody have a, a a good answer for that one? Oh, okay, that's right. Um, I just happened to think that there are things called micro switches that you might be able to try, and that way you wouldn't have to worry about cords. Um, getting caught up in uh, the toy, the toy with the cord. Okay, Mary wants to know, um, is the, inter the interrupter sealed in with the tape or is it glue gunned on? Okay, um, I would just say the glue gun. Okay, then Bethany says, um, is there a way to use switches with CD players? With CD players? 
Bethany, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't tried CD players. Um, I would imagine that there is um, because you, there you've got the same idea where you have the, um, you know, the, the battery, the juice flowing through the device. So I'll go ahead and say yes, but that's going to give me something to try. All right, um, any other questions? Okay, that, that's it. Okay, I see. Bethany has said that um, she has tried to use it with CD players, but that it always um, has the disc starting over from the start. And then Monica says you cannot usually use switches with boom boxes. They work better with tape players. And then, yes, um, Carla says here, you can use the electrical cord with the power link. Um, that's true. The power link is a, another really um, neat device. And um, let me see. With the, I don't know if you're familiar with the power link, but that is something available from Ablenet where you can plug, I just put a picture here just in case there was time to get to the power link. Um, but the, this is what the power link 4 looks like. And in this case, you could plug in, say, your electrical appliance into here. And then, because this has controls for how long, uh, duration, for instance, you might want to keep your electrical appliance on. It could be several minutes. Um, so this is what the PowerLink 4 looks like, and I have used the PowerLink 4. Okay, Carla says um, one one company makes one that pauses and plays already adapted for you. And then Monica mentions for summer, using a switch with a fan is fun. These are really great ideas, and I really appreciate all this. Um, Katie has said switch adapted MP3 players work well. Okay, so that gives us all something else to try again. The idea of the presentation was to get you, you know, thinking, and to have you, um, you know, think of a few fun ideas presented here. But as you can see, oh my gosh, you can just have loads of fun with all of these kinds of things, and hopefully keep exploring and um, sharing inf information with everyone. All right, I have um, just a minute to go. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for being with us. And um, again, I'm... I'll be out there exploring more devices and seeing what Hallmark has and uh, seeing what other kinds of battery-operated toys are available this summer.